taken at the 40. That's Adams. Trying to reverse this field. But everybody's staying home. Now he does a tightrope act. Boy, Houdini's in the house. We're number three. And nobody's home to watch that house. Touchdown, home! What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day today. Now, Bitcoin did have that relief bounce that we were anticipating right here at this critical level. But the one thing that we can pay attention to is that we are coming to the top of this falling wedge pattern right here. And this is going to provide a lot of resistance for Bitcoin. And we do need to break out of this sooner than later. However, in today's video, we need to not just talk about this critical position that Bitcoin is at. But recently, you guys know, we just heard that we do have inflation at 7%, all right? And Bitcoin potentially did bounce off of this news. We did see stocks having a bit of a bounce as well. However, there are still a lot of fears about what will happen when the Fed decides to raise these rates, okay? But in today's video, we have some breakthrough concepts, just some, some radical ideas that we need to talk about because for everyone that's actually worried about what could potentially happen for 2022, you know, is it going to be a bearish year? Are we going to go into a global recession? Well, I have the video for you today and you guys are going to want to definitely stick around to the end of this because you are going to have your minds absolutely blown when you realize what is actually truly happening in the background that a lot of them don't want to talk about. That's number one. And number two, we need to talk about some insane big Bitcoin fundamentals happening right now in the background that could be incredible as the dominoes are aligning themselves to fall. Could this lead to hyper Bitcoinization of the world? Well, let's not go that far, but it could signal a massively good year for Bitcoin in 2022. So if you're interested in the short term, the long term, and this mind-blowing news, you're going to want to watch today's video. Definitely excited to talk about what is happening in crypto right now. And if you're as excited as I am, we'll definitely get subscribed to the channel. Make sure you turn on those bell notifications. And uh, without further ado, guys, we need to dive into this because I am very excited to talk about today's video. So Obviously, short term, you can see we have clearly turned, you know, this resistance into support. We've actually we've actually had support off of it three times. One, we also had this wick right here, right? We had this wick and we've also bounced off it as well. If we have a look at the BLX chart, we are still, in fact, inside of this ascending triangle. Very, very bullish on the monthly. I know the daily is looking a little bit scary, but long term, Bitcoin is still looking all right. Short term. Now, this is what we need to pay attention to, especially if you're looking to trade this. OK, if you are looking to trade this breakout, you can see that obviously we have had multiple breakouts of these falling wedge patterns. We do have the same pattern forming right here, just a little bit larger than the previous two. And we are sitting right here exactly at the top of this level. So it's kind of going to be a very interesting few days for Bitcoin. Obviously, tomorrow, Friday, we are heading into the weekend, so we know things can get a little crazy. There is some resistance, lots of resistance right here. If we actually look at this trend right here that was holding as the spider line, then that does show some confluence right here again. And this puts us right around that $46,000 level. So I said in yesterday's video, the bulls need to step in for Bitcoin and we need to see Bitcoin break above 46K. Now, keep in mind, something that we could see is we actually could see a fake out breakout and then we sort of dance on this. We could dump back into this level, back down to sort of the $42,000 level. And at that point, you'd probably see a lot of the bears stepping in, people saying, that's it, I'm out. We got rejected only to then have another retest and then a breakout up to about the $52,000 level. And that wouldn't be uncommon. I've seen patterns like this before that would also put in a nice double bottom for Bitcoin. So obviously, if you are looking to trade this breakout, obviously you would need Bitcoin to get above 40 6,000, look for a retest, a nice daily candle, and then boom, that would essentially be the trade to take if you are looking too long right now, if you do think that we are going to have another big breakout like we did in the previous two instances. If you are interested in learning how to trade, make sure that you guys watch the videos below. Uh, in the description, over $8,000 in bonuses and also tutorial popping up above for all of you out there that want to learn how to do that. However, looking at the total crypto market cap, we spoke about the significance of this 50 moving average on the weekly. And look at this, guys. You can see we didn't even touch it back here when we wicked down to uh, the $1.14 trillion level for total crypto cap. And right here, we are, in fact, having support on that again. 
you know, we're, we're more than halfway through the week. So there's a very good possibility that we will close that candle above that level. And really that's the $1.95 trillion market cap. However, you know, short term, we're not quite out of the woods. As I said, Rect Capital did point out the 50 moving average uh, on the weekly, the EMA, excuse me, the exponential moving average. Bitcoin is in fact still sitting below it. But keep in mind, Bitcoin wicked below it multiple times here during the Wyckoff accumulation, and we still sprung out of that as well. However, it did take about two months down in these levels. So could we be seeing sideways action for two months? That is a possibility. But what I am noticing as I've said, is we've maintained this upwards trend, right? We actually bounced right here above the blue zone and we bounced exactly on this trend line. And the reason that this is so important is because if we come back here, this was actually holding us down, right? It was the resistance we couldn't break above. And currently we are finding support on it. So flipping previous resistances into support is probably like basics trading 101 analysis. And those are the types of things you look for in a bullish market. Now, this is something we haven't brought up in quite some time, but I think considering some of the fear that's been circulating in crypto recently, it's worth looking at the EMA ribbons on the monthly. Now, it's really simple to see, you know, as long as we can maintain above this ribbon, generally we are in a bull trend. And as soon as we tend to dip inside of it or dip, you know, below it, we go into a bear trend. You can see this right here when Bitcoin was around $427 in the first bull run. As soon as we fell below it, we went into a multi month over a year actually bear market where bitcoin then retraced to 163 right here we stayed above it during the entire run you know and keep in mind we had multiple you know 30 percent 40 percent pullbacks we stayed above the ribbon and as soon as we fell into it that was around six thousand two hundred eighty dollars and that was when bitcoin tumbled 50 percent and we went into the tail end of the bear market same thing happened here uh covid crash is obviously a little bit of an anomaly on the charts it's Hard to really factor in the black swan event, but nevertheless, it still also played out as well. And tell me what, tell me what, what do you see right here, guys? What are you seeing right here? Despite all the fear, despite everyone saying that it's over, despite everyone saying that we're going into a bear market, we have not even touched the top of the EMA ribbon band yet on the monthly. And even when Bitcoin fell 55% and went all the way down to $28,800 right here back in June of last year, we still did not touch these levels. So this is something you have to pay attention to. You have to keep your eyes on the bigger picture here. And you know what else is part of the bigger picture, my friends? The fact that we were actually what had looked to be a bull flag forming over here on the DXY. Well, look at this. What happened to the dollar as soon as that 7% uh, inflation news came out? Well, guys, we fell all the way down. We fell below the resistance, uh, which was acting as support. And now the dollar is treading back downwards again. Now, I've, broke, I've broken this down to you guys before. I mean, if you zoom out at the dollar, sure, the dollar looks like it tries to recover, but ultimately the dollar is in a down trend. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, yes, inflation has been running very high recently, but the Fed, they're coming out, they're tapering right now, right? They're looking to raise interest rates. So it's going to be a different game this year. There's going to be a lot that's going to affect what's going on. Markets are going to be in turmoil. Bitcoin is going to dump. The inflation rate is going to come down, right? That's what they're doing. That's why they're doing this, right? Well, I actually want to turn our attention to a certain professor, Steve Hankey. Now, he is the professor of applied economics at the Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. And he recently went on Kitco News and he had an interview where he was discussing how he feels about what the Fed is doing, whether or not it will affect inflation and how that could affect the economy as a whole. And guys, this is absolutely mind blowing because there is clearly something that they don't want to talk about. There's something that they don't want to say. So I'm actually going to hop over here to this video from KitGo News. Check them out, by the way, amazing channel. And hopefully with their permission, we can uh, use this. So I've actually cut this up into a few smaller clips, but you are going to watch this interview. You're going to want to watch this interview from start to finish. So check this out. Now you have called for this, Professor Hankey. You have called for six to nine percent inflation by the end of 2021. So your forecast has been accurate. The question on everybody's mind now is: Is this the peak? No, it's it's not the peak. So since COVID started, David, in March of 2020, the money supply measured by M2 in the United States is is grown by over 38 percent. Now some of that growth accommodates growth in the real economy. So a little bit is drained away for that. A little bit is drained away because there's an increase in the demand for money as the economy is growing. But 
out of that 38% plus 38% growth, about 78, 75% of that is left as yeah. a residual. Now that is going to go into the economy as inflation. And, and that, as I say, starts after a period of about 12 to 24 months. And so we're just getting the, the start of this is flowing through into the system. This is the quantity theory of money in action. You produce excess money, and, and eventually with a lag of 12 months to 24 months, bang, it starts coming out that excess in inflation. Remember now, Professor, that the Fed has indicated three rate hikes this year. Some speculate potentially even more may happen in 2022, and they've already started their asset purchase tapering program. So do you think that 2022 will be the year of lower money supply and hence finally lower inflation? Well, the, number one, the Fed's doing a lot of talking, but they're not doing any tightening. The money supply measured by M2 is still growing at uh, uh, over 12% on a year over year basis. And, and to actually hit their inflation target at 2% per year, they would have to bring that growth rate down to about five to 6%. That, that's about half of what it actually is right now. So you must keep your eye, it is all about the money supply. It, it is not yakking about interest rate increases and things like that. You only look at the money supply and the money supply right now, right now, is growing okay. about double the rate that would be consistent with a 2% inflation target. So are you saying then that even if they do raise interest rates, I'm not saying they will, but suppose they do raise by 75 basis points, even 1%, that that in itself may not be enough to reduce the money supply. It won't bring, in other words, a higher interest rate, a higher Fed funds rate may not necessarily bring down the M2 money supply. That's correct. Okay. And, 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 the, and the problem with the, what we're facing now is that, the, the excess that they've already produced, that it's there now, we know it's there, and they're still producing an, an excess, by the way, this 12% versus a golden growth rate of around 6%. They're still pumping things up. That's going to be with us for, for a while. This is going to be persistent because, remember, the lag between money injection and inflation, 12 to 24 months, as you indicated, that's correct. So even now, they're producing money at too fast a rate, and that will be with us. Right, right what they're doing today will be with us for another year or two. Just what they're doing today, let alone the massive excess that's already been accumulated due to the post-COVID surge in the money supply. By the way, the, the, the one thing that it, it, you, we did talk a little bit about interest rates, there, there is one possibility that it, it is a scenario, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it might happen, and that is this inflation has gone up now and, and it, could, it could spook the Fed so much and frighten them so much that they start increasing interest rates too rapidly and panic. They've done this before. They could panic because they really don't know what they're doing. And if they panicked and raised interest rates too rapidly and too high, we could easily have a recession. And then we would have it with the old stagflation problem. But we'd have a recession and, and we would still have the inflation. That is a possibility. I'm not predicting that's going to happen. That's what we have to keep our eye on, David. Inflation is always and everywhere caused by a money supply. And the Fed is responsible for the money supply. But they don't want us talking about that. And, and, and the, so that's the propaganda. It's pure propaganda, everything you're reading in the press. And the press, of course, goes right along with it. it it's amazing. The press, you don't read about the money supply, by the way. You read about all these ad hoc excuses for inflation because the press basically has bought into everything they're fed out of Washington, D.C. Look, you've stated that inflation has not peaked. How high could it go from here? Uh, right now, if, if nothing changes and, and the money supply keeps growing at, at its current rate, or, or even, even if it goes down to 6%, even if it goes down to 6%, let's assume, because John Greenwood and I, our calculations assume that they would become rational and lower the growth in the money supply measured by M2 to 6%. Assuming they do that, we will have something north of 6% inflation going into 2024. That okay. excess money, is it's already there. Well, that, that, so it, it will come out into inflation. So this is absolutely insane. So obviously there was the worst case scenario of a potential recession, right? But ultimately he's saying that it doesn't really matter what they're doing because the M1 money supply is still what is the most important. We already have all of these dollars in circulation. It's not like they can go to people's houses and just start taking the dollars away, right? And he's saying that even if they do absolutely everything in their power, there's really only two things 
things that are going to happen. One, we're still going to have inflation potentially straight through to 2024, which interestingly enough is also when the next Bitcoin having is due to happen. And, you know, we have had our discussions on how important and significant that is. But ultimately, this is not going away anytime soon. And as we've even seen, these 0.25%, whatever it is, isn't really going to have enough of an impact on the market. And worst case scenario, you could have the recession, but you're still going to have the inflation happening regardless, at least for the next two years, three years. So really, ultimately, when we go back and we have a look at Bitcoin and we realize that, you know, we are still moving in this uptrend and we do believe in these uh, lengthening cycles, still kind of looks like Bitcoin is the place to be. Still kind of looks like that is the play to be having. And guys, if you want even bigger news than that, Massive news. I broke this news over on my Twitter. Make sure you follow me at the Crypto Zombie on Twitter. I sometimes post things over there, you know, when I can't make videos or when I don't have time. My goodness, in a ruling that is almost identical to El Salvador's bill, we have the country of Tonga. Okay? So we do have Tongan bigwig Lord Fusitua. I might have said his name wrong. He does anticipate that his country could adopt Bitcoin as soon as November. Listen to this, guys. So in a series of tweet, a former member of parliament for Tonga, this guy right here, Lord Fisitua, probably said that wrong, released an estimated time for Bitcoin becoming legal tender. Copying El Salvador's playbook, the move could onboard more than 100,000 Tongans onto the Bitcoin network. The announcement... Um, they say sowed the seeds for question predictions and outright jubilation from Bitcoin Twitter before the Tongan set the record straight. He enthusiastically replied that the timeline for Bitcoin becoming legal tender could happen as early as November or December this year, replying in a tweet, boom, that's us, brother. So this is insane. We knew, you know, for years on the channel, years, we, we would talk about the first country that was going to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender, right? And, and it seemed like a pipe dream. It seemed like something that would never happen. And then nevertheless, El Salvador, they got the ball rolling. They set up that first domino. And now we potentially have Tonga joining in the footsteps. And guys, this is the beginning of what could potentially be true Bitcoinization. Now, I'm not saying the US dollar's going anywhere. You know, the US, they got their own plans. But I am saying there are a lot of these third world countries. We saw what happened yesterday with Strike, right? They brought their uh, app over to Argentina. We know the Argentine peso is essentially a joke right now. We know Venezuela, obviously a joke. I mean, we saw pictures of children climbing on piles of cash, using cash as ladders so they can, you know, reach a cup of soup out of the cupboard, right? Pretty incredible times that we're living in. And also, if you're following me on Twitter, I also broke the news way before everybody else, not to toot my own horn, but I was following the news quite, uh, quite closely yesterday. Back in 2021, right? So there was a study that showed that there was high demand for cryptocurrency payments among uh, both crypto holders and non-holders. However, in the same study, 50% of the participants noted that there is not enough businesses that accept crypto. Well, my friends, this may change very soon because there was, in fact, a study that came out from Visa and they said one out of every four small and mid-sized businesses, now this was a survey that was done over nine different countries, say that they would look to accept or they are looking to accept crypto, Bitcoin as payments in 2022. So 25%, one out of every four. And not just that, in the same study, 73% of the respondents stated that accepting new forms of digital payment options is a key factor that will affect business growth in 2022. In fact, there was another study that I don't have pulled up right now, but I remember reading about it, where a lot of businesses have been sort of pulling their overhead uh, a little bit lower as far as their physical locations because most people are choosing to do their shopping even, you know, for the holidays over the season. If you look at the statistics virtually, right, more people are doing shopping online, on Amazon, on things like that. And they say when you look at that shift into digital purchases, digital transactions, how could you not see Bitcoin and cryptocurrency directly at the forefront? Oh, and I'm not even done with the Visa news yet. By the way, Visa is also partnering with Consensus to develop a CBDC on-ramp tool in efforts to boost adoption of potential central bank digital currencies. Now, I know the topic of a central bank digital currency is a little bit of a black and white kind of hot topic, right? People have their opinions on this. Whatever your opinion of central bank digital currencies is, 
the truth is, is you're seeing Visa, Visa partner with consensus. You're seeing them, you know, see that a lot of their customers, a lot of their clients are looking to potentially onboard crypto, 25% of small businesses. If you're not seeing the big picture here, my friends, then I don't know what to tell you. The writing is on the wall. Although the price action may not be favorable short term, long term, things are looking absolutely incredible for Bitcoin. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, Bitcoin, hyper Bitcoinization of the world, Bitcoin becoming legal tender in all these different countries and you're scared, well, hopefully today's video really helped to put things into perspective. And if you do like content like this, make sure that you drop a like on this video. It actually helps the YouTube algorithm to let other people know you know, hey, check this content out, right? So thank you so much again for coming back to the channel. And of course, if you guys are looking to trade, please be safe. Uh, you know, I do recommend using the test net first. Don't just, you know, go betting the whole mortgage on the trade. And uh, I do highly recommend you check out my tutorials. I have three of them. We go over how to trade profitably and responsibly. And those will be popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.